All right, so um, all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rakhakodash, the one to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who do rule well, and peace and mercy to the hopeful elect, to the 144,000 men that are doing his work in sincerity and in truth around the four corners of the earth, and much love to the one third and the great, uh, innumerable multitude of you believers out there, of you Israelites, to you all, I say shalom and greetings. I'm the brother Yeshaya from Great Millstone West Palm Beach Church. And I pray, Lord willing, that this lesson is edifying through the spirit. All right. So um, I'm, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to line this up. I got some pre some precepts that I wrote down. Excuse my chicken scratch. It was like, you know, I just kind of wanted to do this lesson through the spirit because I'm actually doing some work right now. But the, the, the Lord told me to get on this right now. So if y'all see my my hear my, my phone ring, my call ring, I'm going to have to put them on hold for a second. But um. I wanted to do this lesson because, you know, it's basically it's about annotating, note taking. OK, um, every brother should have notebooks. You know, it's just been some things we've been talking about as of late. Uh, you should have notebooks. There shouldn't be. I know we're in a technological age and you can put stuff on your iPod and I mean your iPad and all of that kind of stuff in your phone. But brothers, you should have notebooks. Now, these are the top. Those are Bibles. I just decided to throw some of my Bibles, you know, and I have more. But these are just some of uh, um, this. This one is the most recent one I purchased. Uh, these two are some of my prizes right here. Um, this one, I just really liked uh, how it looked. But the through part is they got pictures of Edomites in there. I tried. I was going to like make everybody brown, but it was just too many pictures. So I didn't do it. Uh, excuse my my little junk back here. Yeah. Um, and this here, this is a, a relatively like old book, an old Bible. It was, it's kind of one of my treasures, honestly. I need to get more into it. Now that I just pulled it back out, I was like, man, I haven't gotten into this as thoroughly as I should have. So Lord willing, I'll tap into that more. But it's rather, it's rather large. Like, this is my hand, you know. Hold on, y'all. Salakia had that phone call. Um, So yeah, so this is my hand. This is a large, pretty large Bible, you know. Um. And I don't, I wish I knew the year, you know what I mean? But it has a lot of information, like, you see, Family Altar Edition, Red Letter. And it got, like, uh, see that through pictures in there. That's what I don't like about them. I ripped uh, the ones in the front out. Uh, you can see, like, pages missing. I ripped some of them out. All of these are missing right here. It probably did have a date on it in there. But they got the copyright, but I didn't see the, the date on here. And I wish they would have told me the year. But nonetheless, it got an alphabetical index. Hey, and it's an apostles right there. That's the spirit. <laughs> but um, you know, it's a it's a pretty solid Bible. But hey, my point is not to talk about the Bibles per se. Um, but uh more so these notebooks. All right. So I these these notebooks here, this is this is my first year in the truth. This one right here, you know, see I even wrote Genesis on it. This is my first year in the truth right here. And uh this is a dream that I had, you know, and so I just wanted to show that it was like different colors and things like that dream i had but you see i still had like little uh bills and stuff <laughs> that i was putting on there i was talking about real estate my first year in the truth you know but um all of these are notebooks all of these are filled with information you know what i mean like uh things that we we had to write down you know and uh you know all of these are notebooks things that uh um you know, things that you should be doing, things that you should be going over. And I'm missing, honestly, I'm missing about one or two of them because I know I had another small one like this one. But brothers, you should have notebooks. So then you can always go back and look at your notes. You know, you always got a point. Now, you might not always look at it all the time, but you always got notes where you can go back. Something you might have forgot, something you might want to research, you know, and it's in your own writing. You know what I mean? But these are over the years, you know, just constant notes. And this is not a braggadocious point at all. And, I, you know, I got some precepts to back this up. But, you know what I'm saying? These are things that our forefathers were doing, okay? This one right here, this is my most recent one. I like this book a lot. Oh, and let me say this before I continue. When you have a, uh, Salaki, hold on. When you have uh, books, so... These might not look like all that much to y'all, but I like uh, nice books. And this lady told me this when I was in the world. She said, you need to start writing down your goals and your plans. She told me that. She said, and when you do, find you a book that speaks to you. She said that because 
And that's what made me originally get these, right? It looked kind of through with all of this Celtic looking stuff on it. But, you know, I had a cross and I was like, okay, it's kind of cool. That's what this one, you know what I mean? But uh, over the time, I kind of separated from the cross thing. But nonetheless, she said, get something that speaks to you because if it looks good, you'll want to write in it. You'll want to spend more time with it. See, like, uh, um, like this one, this is plain. You know what I mean? You'd be like, ah, no big deal. That's just like a little jot. Like I use sometimes I like write just scriptures, like if I got to do a lesson or something. But if it speaks to you, you'd be like, this is nice, like leather. You'd be like, okay, I want to write in my journal. All right. This one spoke to me. It's like a nice little leather. You know, you got a, um, it got buttons on it. It says, ask and you should usually receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door shall be open to you. This one is like hard wood right? This is like hardwood and it had like a little strap on it, you know? And you can go to Barnes and Nobles and they got different ones, man. You know, it'd be $10, you know? This one is the most recent one I got because it kind of looked like planets and chariots on there. Angelic, so I kind of like this one. Um, but this is my most recent one. <laughs> has some old stuff. It's a little folly in some of these, y'all, when I just be putting thoughts to myself. So my, ignore if you see some of the folly stuff that I put. But majority of this is solid information, you know, majority of this is solid information, you know. Um, yeah, some of that stuff y'all ain't supposed to see. <laughs> Add like some business stuff in there too, you know. So, uh, but, you know, prayers, you know, prayers, you can write down Hebrew words, you know, scriptures, man. You know, see, there's apartments that I was thinking about moving into and prices. But 90% of this is filled with information from class from watching lessons, doing things like that. So I'm probably going to have to do a, a part two to add my precepts. Um, because like I said, I got them written down, but let me, I will just mention this first. Let me say this. This is um, uh, for the word scribe I have written here, right? So our forefathers were, were scribes too, right? Now you had righteous scribes and you had wicked scribes. You know, you would hear the Lord say scribes and Pharisees because they, they thought they were above the rest, you know, but you, we had righteous scribes of our forefathers. So the word scribe here, it says it's a par, which is the same word as book. I, the I, irony in that, right? The word sapar and the, uh, if you ever hear an Amalekite, he'll say safed, that means book. Okay. But sapar is scribe. It says, it says one that counts, recounts, relates. It says the one who numbers, rehearses, to talk, it says secretary. So the, you get the you get secretary from people that were men that were scribes, right? You had men that were writing things down, right? All all of these things are important, you know. All of these things are important, man. You know, men that were scribes were writing these things down. So we have this as a part of our history beyond uh, just what the Bible says. You know what I'm saying? Um, it says uh, a learned man, right? You know, now we understand that we aren't all, uh, we, we, we're we learned in the Bible now. We're scholarly men, but you got to understand there's steps to uh, 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 being a man of the Lord. And Lord willing, we be those men. But this should be a part of your journey. You shouldn't be going just your years and days without having notes, you know. And uh, it was a discussion that we were having in one of, one of the chats that I'm in. And, you know, brothers just kept saying, beloved brothers kept saying, hey, I have this in my notes. I have this in my notes. And that's what really made me do this lesson, because I'm like, you know, brothers are in the spirit right now, even through the discussion to find out as we're, we're in a, the church of Berea spirit. Right. Seeking uh, daily to see the things that were of the things were so, you know, so you got to have that spirit of searching things out, researching, writing it down. You that should be your mindset, man. All right. Um. And so I, I got about four or five precepts I want to pull out, but just to name some of the, uh, uh, our forefathers, it says learn man and sh to show forth. And that's what we do. We show forth this information. And just like you have a, uh, stenographer, right? If you go to, um, a court, there's always a stenographer there. So lock you. There's always a stenographer there, right? Somebody that is recording, you know, even the scriptures speak about rec uh, record, a rec recorder, you know, you had men that were recorders, you had scribes, you had the people that was written down and 
you know, some men are more diligent than this than others, you know, but I like the brother, uh, I don't want in our camp. I call him the camp scribe because that brother is always writing down information. You know, we be getting done class. That brother still, we all talking, that brother still be writing. You know what I mean? So some men is truly their lot to be scribes, but we all are scribes. It's just how the scriptures say we're a nation of kings and priests, you know? So, hey, kings, kings got their books too. Look at all, I, I love, uh, um, what are those, um, uh, 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 period pieces. You know what I mean? The brother Ba'ar really liked those a lot. You know, and in those period pieces, they always show the king would have his own notes. He would have his own things that he was doing. He would have his own books, you know? So you got to be able to have, you got to be a scribe in the spirit. You know, you still got to be able to write stuff down, man. And this is how you retain memory as well. Note taking, do you think they got... Okay, when y'all go to education, like the education system in school, right? When you're in school, they put that uh um they put that idea of note taking, that comes from the Bible, man. <laughs> you gotta understand that they got that from the men of the Lord. All things and the Lord says we are the uh um uh um uh, I'm I'm forgetting it off the top of my head, but we're the form that's it. We are the former of all things, man. You know, we formed this through the spirit and power of your how about Shemel Shah, of course. But um uh just a lot of the scribes got names that start with S's, but Sariah, Shiva, Shebna, Shepna, Baruch, and Ezra. Baruch and Ezra were scribes, man. Well known scribes. Brothers be bringing up Baruch four and six, bring it up. You know, you 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 saying that, but that Baruch was a scribe, and Baruch was Jeremiah's scribe. And the word Baruch is like saying Barak or Barawak, which means blessed or blessing. You see? So, but he was Jeremiah's scribe. And I, I you know, I guess uh, um, I do want to get that scripture out. Let me get that. I might as well go to the big one that I said I wanted to use. See, look, they got maps in here, man. I got to really get back into this one, man. But uh, uh, Jeremiah 36. Let's go to Jeremiah 36 real quick. Okay. And, and um, even Baruch got his own book, right? You know, he got his own book and he's a scribe. But just because you're a man of Lord... <laughs> You know, it doesn't mean that you can't be a scribe too, man. All right, Jeremiah, what did I say? Jeremiah 36 and 32. So let's see what it says here, right? Jeremiah, I'm going to start at 31. It says, And I will punish him and his seed and his servants for their iniquity. I will bring upon them and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and upon the men of Judah all the evil that I pronounce against them, but they hearken not. This is the point, verse 32. Then took Jeremiah another roll and gave it to Baruch, the scribe, the son of Neriah, who wrote therein from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the book, which Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had burned in the fire. And there were added besides unto them many like words. You see, so things that were recorded. How you think we got all this history? All of these Bibles, y'all. <laughs> oh, look, that's through. You know what I'm saying? They show a so-called white man. But, you know. We know that all the forefathers, so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, right? And Israelite foreigners, you know, but we, all these Bibles that we got, how do y'all think we got this? You know, we got all of this, uh, the, in the book of Maccabees, which my, I left my, my apocrypha is in the car right now and my six, my 16, 11. Um, but it talks about, uh, uh, how, they abridged, and I'm gonna have to get the precept. That's probably a good good part of the segue. But how they how it took much labor to uh to to write down the words for those that were desirous, des desirous to learn, man. Okay, so you gotta have a desire and a passion to learn. So I'm gonna I'm gonna end it here, and then I'm gonna get my precepts in the alternative clip. But Lord willing, you know this part is edifying, so brothers can know what's in the spirit, and so you can have notes, man. Notes are very very important, man. So I, uh, I'm on, on to my uh, my next part, y'all. Shalom. Now, before I get my precepts, I'm going to tell you something that's mad spiritual. Uh, one of my friends just texted me out of nowhere. As soon as I finished that last video, they just said, uh, this class has hella writing. <laughs> they just said that. I was like, man, that's crazy. And then, so I do also note-taking um, document, some document writing for my job as well. And as soon as I got finished writing the document, I got to sign my notes. And it said 1044. I'm like, call oh, all y'all. So this thing, the Lord, the Lord cold, man. You know, he's undefeated. But uh, let me get some of these precepts that I told y'all I would get. This is uh, 1 Kings uh, 4. And um, I started one. The point is in three. It says, so King Solomon was king over all Israel. And these were the princes which he had. Azariah, the son of Zadok, the priest. 
Elahoreth and Ahiah, the sons of Shisha, scribes. Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, the recorder. You see, so there were scribes and there were recorders amongst our people. So we can have this great history. That's when you go into like ancient relics and scrolls. How do you think Esau got uh, uh, the Masoretic Hebrew, the uh, Phoenician, right? How do you think he got hold on that, man? Because Esau, you know, the Assyrian, if you will, you know, Esau was taking our scrolls, rewriting them, redoing them, stealing our stuff. You know, that's what they do, man. You know, but all of this ancient wisdom and knowledge come from the Yahweh Bashim Al Shah sent his his men and this scroll taken. Um, hey, for my brothers out there who like uh um uh the last kingdom, right? The last kingdom is a good one. It has uh um Uhtred, son of Uhtred of Bebenber. You know, and he's a he's basically it's an old period piece, which I encourage all brothers to watch. That's a, it's a series now, it's like four or five seasons, but I guarantee you they're worth it. Right. It's talking about uh, and those though, those Danes, a lot of them were Israelites, man. You know, uh, um, even some of the kings that they had in there, a lot of those are during the ancient times, the dark medieval times. A lot of those kings might have been Jake, too, you know, but they had a uh, once they had a couple scenes where they were going to what they call the library. And in the library, there are all of these scrolls of paper that were just rolled up. So it was an old library. They didn't have books, but they had scrolls that were lined up and they were all put in sections to let you know how the history will be laid out. And he even told Uhtred, I'm not going to write you in your great works in this book because he wanted to, he didn't, he, he said they can't know that a Dane and that a heathen was the reason for our success, basically, you know, but the Lord is, is beautiful and his art. Matter of fact, it calls him an author, right? <laughs> it just came to my mind, you know, uh, he's not going to let somebody take away his authorship. He said he would not give his glory to another. OK, um, let me see here. And I'm going to when you go, who, who's the author? Author is a writer of a book. This is first Corinthians 14. And uh, I'm going to start at 32. It says, sheesh, 31 is a banger, too. It says, for ye may all prophesy one by one that ye that all may learn and all may be comforted. So we do this so we can learn. So even having your notebooks is a form of. A prophecy too, saying before, right? We writing the things so you can understand them better. It says, and the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets, right? So the prophets before were writing, man. So don't think that we're not going to be writing in this day. It says, for the most high Yahweh is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. So he calls himself an author, you see? And so let, let's get the, the definition for the word author and see what comes up. You know, author definition. It says, author, this is in the Oxford. It says, a writer of a book, article, or report. It says, someone who writes books as a profession, an originator or creator of something, especially a plan or an idea. So our father is an author. Our father is a scribe. Our father is a writer, right? So what makes you think we're not going to be many writers, right? The beauty of it. The beauty of it all. And I, I got to get that. Uh, oh, yeah. I got to get that uh, Maccabee since I got my phone now. Uh, uh, let me get that before I go to my next verses, before I forget. I can't I can't forget to bring that one out. This is Second um, Maccabees 2 and verse 23 on down. It says, all these things I say being declared by Jason of Cyrene, in five books, we will essay to a bridge in one volume. Excuse me. I'm, I think I got to sneeze, but I'm trying to talk through it. Um, but it says they're going to bridge. When you abridge something, you make it easier to understand or close it. You don't write as much. It says, for considering. Man, these people, I'm, people will hit me up. Salakia. Um, it says, uh, for considering the infinite number. And the difficulty which they find that desire to look into the narrations of the story for the variety of the matter, we have been careful that they will read may have delight. And they and that they that are desirous to commit to memory might have ease and that all into whose hands it might it comes might have profit. So. The Lord, the Lord has us commissioned because we're desirous to commit to memory that we might have ease, right? 
we might have delight in the reading and the carefulness, the things that were done by our forefathers. And so in our hands, we're going to, who's profiting from the Bible, really, in, the, in this time, right? The two-thirds aren't profiting from the Bible. The, the heathen aren't profiting from the Bible. The, uh, uh, the Edomites aren't profiting from the Bible. They might be financially profiting, but they're not profiting for the reason that it was intended. The elect, the hopeful elect are the ones who's profiting from uh, writing, in the, writing and reading and understanding and speaking. We're the ones who profit through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Shah. It says, therefore, to us that have taken upon us this painful labor of abridging, it was not easy, but a matter of sweat and watching. Let's get the definition for the word abridging. And I didn't mean to make this this long. It's really the spirit, y'all. Yep, abridging. It says to shorten a piece of writing without losing the sense to curtail a writer privilege. So that means they're trying to get the whole idea. That's when you, basically it's a summary, but you know, maybe a little lengthier, but a summary gives you, you want to get the idea, the sense of it without taking away too much of the story. But that's what you do when you abridge, you tighten it up. You might take away some of the things you're like, okay, we can, we can, uh, that we can leave that out to make this better so we can get the important details. And that's what we be telling people when it comes to the Bible. The people are like, well, things were taken out. Well, we got the Apocrypha, number one. But even if they, we got everything we need to be saved, y'all. We got everything. We don't need the book of Jasher. We don't need the book of Enoch. We got everything we need to be saved. So this is a bridge through the Holy Spirit to give us what we need. It says, uh, so it says it was not easy, but a matter of sweat and watching. So a lot of work went into the men writing and breaking down the narrations of what was going on in men's life to give us what we have today. So that's a, 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 a talent that we got to be thankful for, for our forefathers and ourselves now. It says, even as it is no ease unto him that prepareth the banquet and seeking the benefit of others, yet for the pleasure of many, we will undertake gladly this great pain. So, hey, even when we do our lessons, brothers, we're undertaking uh, gladly great pains to Please the sheep and feed the sheep of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai is seeking the benefit of others. You know, when you prepare a banquet, you're trying to make everybody else happy. You know, you be the last one to eat. <laughs> you at your own house, you be the last one to eat because you want everybody else to be pleased. So, but we're but with that, you do a great service and a great charity. You know, it says leaving to the author the exact handling of every particular and laboring to follow the rules of an abridgment. You see. For as the master builder of a new house must care for the whole building, but he that undertaketh to set it out and paint it must seek out fit things for the adorning thereof, even so I think it is with us. You see, so we got to find all the fine details. We got to find the things that are important. We got to know what to talk about through the spirit. We got to know what to write down. You know, it says to stand upon every point and go over things at large and be curious in particulars belonging to the first author of the story, but to use brevity and avoid much laboring of the work is to be granted him that will make an abridgment, right? So making things shorter. Sometimes a lesson, you know, like the apostles, they they can, you know, they'll knock an a hour lesson, hour and a half lesson out like it's, like it's cake, you know, but they also do abridgment uh, 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 lessons. They'll be like, okay, I can make this a 20 minute lesson, I can 30 minute lesson, I can make the, I can abridge it, I can make a shorten it so you get the sense of what I'm saying without making it as lengthy. You see? So that's just an important thing, a part of our history that was happening uh for the nation of Israel. Okay. Uh so let, let me go back. I got like one or two precepts left, I think. Uh this is did I get this one? Second Kings 18 and 18. And when they had called to the king, there came out of them to them Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, and Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder. You see? So they had Shebna around. They had a scribe. They had a recorder around. Okay? Second Kings 25 and um, verse, where are you? Verse 19, it says, and out of the city, he took an officer that was set over the men of war and five men of them that were in the king's presence, which were found in the city and the principal scribe of the host, which mustered the people of the land and three score men of the people of the land that were found in the city. So the scribe got everybody mustered up for the battle and he was in the king's presence. You see, he was around the king writing things down, but he, he saw everything that was going on, got everybody amped up to go to get, get in the war, man. All right. 
uh, 1 Chronicles 27 and verse 32, um, it says, and also Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, a wise man, and a scribe. And Jehiel, the son of Hakmani, Hakmani was, the, was with the king's sons. So you see that? So Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, a wise man, and a scribe. You know, so he was a wise man, and the scribe was a part of his talents. All right, this is the last one I'm going to get just to talk about our forefather Ezra. You read Ezra, you read Esdras, right? You read First and Second Ezra. You, it talks in there how he would lay down and he was speaking, you know, throughout the night. And uh, men were just writing down what he was saying. So they were scribing a scribe, you know. But this is Ezra 7 and 10. It says, for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. Now, this is the copy of the letter that the king Artaxerxes gave unto Ezra the priest, the scribe. See, Ezra was a priest and a scribe. Even a scribe of the words of the commandments of the Lord and of his statutes to Israel. So the man who you re recite and read over all the time, he, he was a scribe. He was a writer of the Lord. It says even a scribe as the words of the commandments of the Lord. Right. It says Artaxerxes, king of kings, unto Ezra the priest, a scribe of the law of the God of heaven, perfect priest and at such a time. And so after this, he was making a decree and things like that for the, the temple to be re, uh, the beginning of the, uh, the temple to be rebuilt. All right. Uh, to go up to Jerusalem. But ultimately, Ezra was a, a scribe, man. So brothers, be so the be uh, Hasaparium, right? The scribes. OK, be a hey, we the we are a part of the book. It said we written. It says, blessed are not that you're able to do these things, but that your names are written in the book of life. Hey, brothers, we writing about ourselves. Lord willing, we be those men. So th th these things are vitally important, man. So I just wanted to get that out. I pray, Lord willing, it was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rechakodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who do rule well. And peace and mercy to the elect. Until next time, Shalom.